when Sega released its Saturn in 1994, it was pretty clear that things weren't quite ready for prime time. There were few games in Japan, and even when software did start to come out, it was consistently a case of compromises. Virtua Fighter had glitches that caused polygons to drop. Clockwork Knight had to be cut into two games to be finished. And of course, Daytona USA had all kinds of visual issues with polygon pop-in and performance. Sega would spend pretty much the entirety of that first year refining its development tools and trying to fix the PR nightmare that had followed. Step one had been to get Virtua Fighter the respect it deserved, which was done with Virtua Fighter Remix. The second step was to get the next wave of Saturn releases looking as good as possible, which was covered by the trio of Virtua Fighter 2, Sega Rally, and Virtua Cop. These arcade ports looked leaps and bounds better than the earlier stuff, and brought some newfound respect for Saturn's hardware makeup. But fans had been vocal about their desire for a Daytona USA game on the Saturn that was more in line with the arcade version they loved so much. Sega knew they needed to do something, so in early 1996, they began development of what was known early on as Daytona Remix. In this episode, we will be covering the Saturn's attempt to do Daytona USA not once, not twice, but three times. Were any of them any good? Let's find out. The original arcade version of Daytona USA was released officially in March of 1994. Developed by Yu Suzuki and AM2, it was an instant hit in every region of the globe. Eight-player network capability, incredible texture-mapped graphics, and that silky smooth performance you knew and loved from Sega made it a standout that completely took the arcade world by storm. It was three tracks labeled Beginner, Advanced, and Expert. These tracks all had memorable layouts and set pieces to define them, and each one had its very own Japanese music selection that endeared them to you even more. It also had a robust AI system that separated it from other racing games. It would analyze your performance mid-play and adjust accordingly. Drive weak and the cars were less aggressive. Drive well and they would block your way and speed up. There was nothing quite like it at the time, and even though I enjoyed Ridge Racer, this was on another level entirely. It also featured multiple camera angles to play from, tons of cars to race against, and had both sit-down and stand-up varieties of cabinets. It's one of Sega's most successful arcade games ever, and its home port was much anticipated. With the Saturn releasing in 1994, it was a no-brainer for Sega to get together members of AM2 and do a port of Daytona USA for their new machine. Sega even began advertising the Saturn version within the arcade game itself, trying to court as many fans as they could as early as they could. Development was not smooth, however. The Saturn version missed the system's Japanese launch and would not be finished until April of the following year. You started to hear some distressing news of its visual quality long before then in game magazines of the time, and unfortunately, the red flags were quite true. The port was a notable and sobering reminder that Saturn development had not been the easiest thing in the world, even for Sega. The polygon draw distance was right on top of you. The performance was one-third of the arcade original. The resolution and texture quality both took major hits. You expected some level of all these things because of the power difference between the two platforms, but to see them at the level we received was somewhat distressing. The gaming media glommed onto it as absolute proof that Sega was in no shape to take on Sony with hardware or software. And of course, that's the story that you're told today by those looking back in retrospectives. From someone that imported it day one for my Saturn, it was an incredible experience. I loved its gameplay point blank. It was fast, and while that frame rate was a bit funky, it was 100% consistent and never changed. The polygon draw-in was closer than I would have liked, but comparatively to other racing games at the time, the graphics were phenomenal. You'll hear everyone regurgitate the same opinion that Ridge Racer looked better to everyone, 
but how many other racing games in April of 1995 looked better than this? Despite its downgrade, Daytona on the Saturn was still a very decent game visually at the time, and it would take another year before we would see Polygon racing games that consistently were its superior, particularly on the Saturn itself. And I'll tell you another thing that no one ever mentions when talking about old Daytona here. The Saturn had to put up to 40 cars on the track at the same time in order to replicate the gameplay of the arcade faithfully. Often the PlayStation version of Ridge Racer is presented as a direct analog to this in regards to proof that it was better and easier to program for. I submit this is complete BS. Daytona USA was a much more difficult translation all the way around. Trackside detail was more complex in Daytona. There were far more cars on the track in Daytona. Cars took damage in Daytona that affected both the visuals and the gameplay. And finally, the arcade's AI routines were there. Daytona USA was an infinitely more difficult game to translate before the hardware it was being translated to was even to be considered. Let's not sugarcoat this too much though. It had visual problems that Sega Rally would expose only eight months later. The truth was that as good as Daytona USA had played on the Saturn, the hardware was capable of so much more visually. The failure of Daytona to please the public became ever more apparent with the release of Sega Rally. Having a longer development cycle had really helped in its outcome, and the end product was vastly superior visually. Sega CS did the honors with help from Sega AM3, making sure it ran at a smoother frames per second, an improved draw distance, and the texture quality saw some pretty major upgrades as well. Even the usual Sony-loving gaming press heaped loads of praise onto it. Fans began to call for Sega to treat Daytona as they had Virtua Fighter, and remix it with the improvement scene in Sega Rally. Rumors began to fly of Daytona Remix using the Sega Rally engine, and before long, it was official. Sega was working on the project for a late 1996 release. Sega Rally had proven that the Saturn could do more, and Sega was going to give it to us. Once again, Sega CS was put to task with making a new racing engine. Sega Rally had been one thing, but Daytona would require additional changes. Daytona had many more cars on the track, and the AI was far more dynamic than the mindless drones in Sega Rally. The development team had a heck of a task in front of them, but still delivered Daytona USA Championship Circuit Edition in November of 1996 for both the US and European markets. The visual and sound changes were apparent from the moment the demo mode started up. It was damn near unrecognizable. While the basic designs were kept in place for the tracks, Sega CS changed many of the art assets, the music, and most of the way it was presented. Along with these changes, they also added a ton of different features. There are more cars to choose from, two additional tracks, 3D analog pad support, a new replay system, and even a two-player split-screen mode. The graphics engine just didn't see changes in assets, as it also runs at a solid 30 frames per second and has improved polygon draw distance. I mean, just from that, you might be thinking to yourself that this would be the ultimate version of Daytona USA. I mean, with improved graphics, a new soundtrack, and two-player mode, and a pile of new features, this was the version of Daytona we should have gotten in the first place. Well, as with all things of this nature, reality versus expectation has a cruel way of ruining everything. You see, it's true Daytona needed some additional content. The Bare Bones original was a straight conversion and not much else. It's also true that the visual upgrade and multiplayer mode was much appreciated. But one thing Daytona USA didn't need changed was that fast and responsive gameplay. It had been perfect, and unfortunately, Championship Circuit Edition here changes it in a pretty profound way. The tracks feel more slippery and the car is less responsive. No matter the car I choose or the setting I select, this never really feels anything like Daytona USA in regards to gameplay. Since I had thought the gameplay was the best part of the original port, this basically reversed everything. This Daytona had the extra content and better graphics it needed to compete, but completely broke the gameplay for me. 
I'm just awful at it too and have never been able to find any kind of rhythm for success. They also messed up the music a bit too much for my liking, downplaying the vocals that had made the original so unique. I also thought that the visuals were still lacking. While the draw-in was improved, it was still noticeably worse than Sega Rally, and the performance had some stuttering and hitching when zoomed out you never saw in the previous version. I realized then that Daytona USA would have been a challenge on any home hardware of the era simply due to the way it was designed. Sticking 40 cars all together on one small track was going to impact things far greater than any other racer. I mean, even stuff like F-Zero X on the Nintendo 64 only had 30 vehicles, and that had the simplest polygon structures in the history of 3D gaming. In developing a cutting-edge arcade game, Sega had essentially painted itself into a corner. Bringing Daytona USA home was going to come with a huge amount of cutbacks, no matter how many times they remade it. There must have been some disagreement on how the US and European versions turned out, because there was no Japanese version of Daytona USA Championship Circuit Edition. Instead, Sega CS2 kept working on the project, releasing Daytona USA Circuit Edition at the end of January 1997 in Japan. They added Tizen Link Cable support, put the arcade soundtrack back in, allowed you to race at different times of the day, improved the graphics engine a tad further, and made additional changes to the gameplay. This was considered by many to be the better version because of the additions and changes. Is any of that true though? At its heart, it's very much the same game. The graphics are mostly the same, the presentation is mostly the same, and although there are some additions and changes to the way it plays, it's still very different from the arcade and original Saturn port. I think your tolerance of these two games greatly depends on your expectations. What's here is not a bad racing game, and once you adjust to its play mechanics, you can have quite a bit of fun with it. But this would take me years to realize because I wanted it to play exactly like the original Saturn release with all the new features. I spent countless hours in the original Daytona port shaving my times down to as fast as I possibly could, challenging my best friend to do better. Championship Circuit Edition and Circuit Edition both looked the part as an upgrade, but by messing with the gameplay they made it somewhat of an acquired taste. Some of you likely love them, but if you are like me, you just tolerate these titles as something that could have, and should have, played so very much better. The sad thing about Daytona USA Championship Circuit Edition's existence was that Sega CS was originally meant to start developing the Saturn version of Indy 500, the Model 2 arcade racing game. I love this game and feel the Saturn would have benefited so much more from having it in its library, particularly if it had the upgrades that Championship Circuit Edition had in terms of content. In case you aren't familiar with it, Indy 500 was sort of a cross between Virtual Racing and Daytona that was released in the summer of 1995 and developed by Sega AM1. It had some great track design and the gameplay was a further refinement of Sega's earlier efforts, with an incredible sense of speed. 
While I can't take away from the popularity of Daytona and how much fans wanted a remake, hindsight is 2020, and I would have rather have had this ported instead of what we got. The story of Daytona USA is as rocky as the story of the Saturn itself. It started off rough and by the time things got better, it just wasn't enough to redeem the previous failures. While history judges the visuals of the first Daytona port harshly, I happen to think it's still one of the better racing games on the system. The only other game to beat it all the way around was Sega Rally, which was a different experience altogether. I do admit at the time I had wanted that Daytona Remix release so bad I could taste it, but the reality of Championship Circuit Edition was that it was just too different for my taste. Later on, when I learned I missed out on Indy 500 because of it, it made it an even more bitter pill to swallow. Things didn't get better either. When the Dreamcast showed up, I fully expected Sega to bring us Daytona 2 home, arcade perfect in every way. Instead, Sega again remade the first Daytona USA, and again it failed to play like the arcade version. This disappointment would go on until the Xbox 360 and PS3 received improved home ports in 2011. Finally, these titles were what they should have always been, and played like they always should. We still don't have that port of Daytona USA 2, something Sega really needs to remedy ASAP. I'm SegaLordX, thank you guys for watching, and I will catch you next time.